Hey guys, Andrew Shrout here in the sideboard. I'm here with Jeff Hoagland. We're here to talk about your legacy deck. Yes, sir. And you are playing Death and Taxes. Yep. This is a deck you've been playing for a while. A couple yep. months. Last few months now. Uh, I really like this deck because I think it's quite possibly the fairest deck in Legacy. Sure. Uh, basic Plains, Mother of Runes, that's about as fair as you can get for a start. I don't know. Mother of Runes is a, a, can be oppressive. <laughs> it can be. Uh, but yeah, of course, this is not a new deck by any means, so... Yep. Uh, I, I have to assume that some of our viewers are kind of familiar with this archetype, but uh, just real quickly kind of take us through what we're seeing. So uh, Stoneforge Mystic is your bomb. Uh, Stoneforge Mystic plus Batter Skull. Uh, it's a bomb that also offers a little bit utility by getting cards like Jitty and Sword of Fire and Ice. Mm -hmm. um, Thalia is really the card that makes this archetype tick. Um, your Mana Denial teams up really well with her in terms of your Wastelands and Rishadun ports, mm -hmm. and then you have cards like Mother of Runes and Caracas to protect her and make sure she stays on the field. Okay. Uh, Flicker Wisp is just a great utility card in this deck. It gets to reset things like Phyrexian Revoker if you want to name something else later. It gets mm -hmm. to recheck your Stoneforge Mystic to get additional piece of equipment. Um, with an Aether Vial on three, it allows you to save cards from removal. Mm -hmm. And uh, with Containment Priest out of the sideboard, it allows you to permanently exile opposing creatures. Nice, nice. Uh, your, your two drops of choice. This is a little bit of a kind of a deviation from the stock list. No Sarah Avengers. Correct. Um, I think uh, a lot of the cards in this deck you just want to have the maximum amount of interaction with your opponent. Because okay. we don't have any much really inherent card advantage, we want all of our cards to be interacting as much as possible. Okay. Instead of just having a high power level. So um, I think the format, uh, since Treasure Cruise has been printed, is in a spot where you want at least three copies of Spirit of the Labyrinth in your main deck. Okay. And uh, Revoker is just so bad against the Delver decks in the format that I think uh, a split of these cards that's even is definitely okay. where you want to be right so now. Th this is like, it carries, carries a lot of weight, but there's one primary matchup where there's just nothing to turn off with. Correct. It. Occasionally okay. they have a Grim Lava Mancer in the main, but usually it's just doing okay. nothing. All right. Four Aether Vial, kind of the glue that holds the deck together. Aether Vial allows you to make your tricky cards trickier mm -hmm. and uh, get through counter spells. Our de facto removal spell in Swords of the Plowshares. And then uh, our actually Stoneforge isn't our only bomb, I guess. Brimaz, King of the Kitties, is okay. here. And he is definitely one of my favorite cards in this deck to play. Sure. Um, just a card I really enjoy casting. Uh, okay. it's, a, it's also a powerful card in the context of this deck because with Aether Vial and Caracas, you're able to dodge a lot of removal with him. Okay. In addition to him having four toughness to already dodge things like Fork Bolts and Lightning sure. Bolts. Just a really resilient threat. Yeah. Now, this is a card that Death and Taxes has not seen in a, in a minute. Yep, uh, and uh, Mangara of Corondor, is that how we say that? So it, that's a card that's uh, kind of both uh, a meta call and a personal preference. Uh, okay. This card's very good in the grindier matchups, like against uh, Miracles and uh, the Mirror Match and other Stoneforge decks. Mm -hmm. So having that kind of flexibility to answer target thing in your main deck is something, a powerful out to be able to draw to sometimes. Okay. Uh, Batter Skull, Umazawa's Jite, uh, uh, just the go-tos. Busted cards that we should all be playing. Sure. And of course, one of you can get with Stoneforge Mystic, along with Sword of Fire and Ice. And then this, this is not an equipment. So uh, the Relic of Progenitus is kind of my uh, main deck hate card for uh, various matchups. Um, I played a main deck uh, Containment Priest last weekend in Seattle, but I think uh, going into this weekend, I'm expecting uh, more decks that'll be playing Treasure Cruise as opposed to where Containment Priest will be good. Okay. So uh, Relic's a nice kind of proactive way that can also fight Treasure Cruise on top of the Spirit of the Labyrinth, but still cycle when it's not the greatest. Okay. Uh, and then Death and Taxes is a deck, of course, it's mono white, but it's known for having a lot of tricksiness to its, its mana base. Yep, so the, the mana base I'm playing right now, I'm really pretty happy with. Um, we have uh, f five utility lands total, the first of which is Flagstones of Troll Care, which uh, doesn't interact with anything favorably in our main deck, but it's great with the uh, Cataclysms. We have post board and a number okay. of matchups. Um, our other utility lands, if we can, yep, is uh, Aganjo Castle. I think if you're playing Brimaz, playing Aganjo Castle is really important. Mm -hmm. And the reason for that is against the young Pyromancer decks, uh, if they lightning bolt your Brimaz, they can then block with the token and trade with it. Sure. Uh, Aganjo Castle makes that a line that's not possible. Okay. And then uh, Richard Import, Caracas, Wasteland, these are all pretty standard in the deck. Sure. Caracas interacts with your legends favorably, as well as being a main deck hate card for things like Show and Tell okay. and uh, Reanimator. All right. And then we have our basic planes, ten, all hail the basic planes. Ten whole basic planes. It is the reason to play the deck. We don't get stifled. We don't really get okay. wastelanded. We don't take damage from our lands. Okay. Uh, in fact, taking damage from our lands, one of the lands you'll see in the mana base of Death and Text a lot of times is a number of Horizon Canopy. And I think there's enough uh, Lightning Bolts and Monastery Swiss Spears running around that I just don't want to be taking damage from my lands right now. Okay. Uh, before, before we get to the sideboard, let's talk a little bit about how you, what drew you to Death and Taxes in the first place. I know you... You started out by saying it's it's the fairest deck. 
Yeah, so, so. Uh, playing Legacy, there's a lot of uh, obnoxious and broken things that go on in the format, mm -hmm. and uh, I've always been drawn to the decks that force my opponent to interact with me as much as possible. Sure. Like, not only does my deck play a good, honest, fair game of Magic, but like it encourages my opponent to do the same. Okay. So, and I think Death and Taxes is the most powerful deck in the format that's able to attack from that axis. All right. There's other decks in the format that do similar things, but they're not as consistent or as powerful. All right. Uh, and it, was there anything about this particular field, this particular group of players, that made you think this is going to be a better call than normal? Um, I think this deck's uh, well positioned against both the other Stoneforge Mystic decks, and mm -hmm. I think it has a very reasonable Miracles matchup for the other decks that exist in Legacy. Okay. So we'll take a look at the sideboard. Three Containment Priests. So this is a card that's kind of caused some tension since it's got printed with mm -hmm. people that play the deck. I know I've heard a lot of people say that, well, it turns off your Aether Bile, so that's not worth playing. And um, my answer to that is our deck already has a number of inherent non-bows in it. Like we're playing uh, Sword of Fire and Ice and Spirit of the Labyrinth together, so what's a little bit of hate between friends? Uh, sure. Containment Priest is just such a powerful card at what it does, it's definitely worth playing somewhere in the 75. Okay. Uh, Cataclysm, you mentioned earlier. Uh, where do we bring in the Cataclysm? So the, the Cataclysm gets to come in, uh, basically it's your GG button against Miracles. If this card resolves, you're generally winning the game on the spot. Okay. Um, it also is phenomenal against Elves because it doesn't kill your hate cards like Phyrexian Revoker and Spirit of Labyrinth because they're artifacts and enchantments, which Cataclysm lets you keep on top of keeping another creature. Okay. And then two Council's Judgment. Uh, Council's Judgment is our, we don't want to get railed by True Name Nemesis card. Okay. So we need at least some way to interact with that in sure. the 75. Uh, by playing Council's Judgment for that, for that slot, we also get an additional way to remove counterbalances and jaces in the Miracles matchup, as well as pieces of equipment in the Stoneforge matchup. Okay. Uh, two Enlightened Tutors uh, to kind of turn a couple of one ofs into three ofs, virtually. Yeah, so the Enlightened Tutor allows us to. I wasn't sure how many people were going to be playing combo going into this format. Mm -hmm. I know uh, one of the competitors traditionally plays Omnitel, so I didn't want to cut Aether Sworn Cannonists entirely. Okay. So by playing Enlightened Tutor, we able to get a couple more copies of that card into the deck. Okay. Um, Enlightened Tutor offers a ton of flexibility in this deck against the Blue Red Delver deck post board because it finds cards like uh, Absolute Law. And if we flip to the next one, excuse me, mm -hmm. we have. Um, uh, Ratchet Bomb and other cards okay. like that in the sideboard that it, I can pick up coming. as well. Yeah, yeah. In addition to finding, um, it's kind of acts as Stoneforge Mystics 5 and 6 to find copies of Jitty when you really oh, need sure. it. Oh, sure. Okay. Uh, Sunlance here is kind of that fifth removal spell slot. Mm -hmm. um, historically, Death and Taxes has often played Path to Exile in this slot, but because Blue Red Delver is now playing anywhere between one and three basic lands, ramping, that ma ramping them in that matchup is very bad. So okay. I think this slot should be either a Gut Shot or a Sunlance, and uh, this weekend I'm choosing to play Sunlance because Killing Flip Delvers is very valuable. Okay. Uh, Pithic Needle is another card for the Miracles matchup that you get to find with Enlightened Tutor. All right. And then we have uh, Ratchet Bomb in the sideboard. This is kind of our mono-white engineered explosives, I like to refer to it as. Um, it's phenomenal in the Blue-Red Delver matchup because it'll mop up all the tokens as well as the Flip Delvers, and it offers a great amount of utility against Miracles because it can kill an Entreat when they Miracle off the top, as well as ticking up to kill Counterbalances and Jaces. Okay. Uh, and second, the... second Relic to round out the board. Uh, like I said, if I wasn't... Um, if I wasn't playing one in the main deck, I would definitely have two copies in the board. Mm -hmm. um, in a more diverse legacy field, I would probably play some number of Rest in Peace instead of Relic of Progenitus, but I'm not expecting decks like um, Storm or Dredge to be super popular this weekend among the other competitors, so I'm opting to play Relic because it has utility against Treasure Crews. Okay. All right. Well, it looks like you are well prepared to uh, kind of force your opponents to, to play a little fairer than they're maybe used to. Yep. Thanks for coming in and uh, kind of talking to it with us. Thanks for having me. Stick around. We've got plenty more coverage of the Players' Championship here in Roanoke.